I'm Barney from Sonic Moon Sticks. We just played on the Strummer of Love main stage. Um, been a long, a, a long journey to get here for us, but it was it was worth it once we played the show. You were brilliant. Thank you. Well, I enjoyed it. Sorry, I've been selling merchandise, keeping Sonic Moon Sticks afloat. <laughs> The, the guy in our office who's absolutely crazy about you is also crazy about um, the King Blues. Do you feel any kind of affiliance with King Blues? We, we, I mean, yeah, our bands are really inextricably linked because we came from the same scene um, in bands that we played with before. Our, our, on our first Sonic Boom 6 demo, we do a quote from um, Itchy's old band, um, I've known, we've, we've known Nitch since we were 17 um, years old and... The first tour yeah, was with us, wasn't it? Well, yeah, one, yeah, of, the the first, first one of the first tours they did was supporting us and then we supported them last year. We've we've all been in the same scene, same, we've, we're in a band called Suicide Bid together, we all did that project together. So, um, yeah, we're very linked with, with, um, with King Blues, so, yeah. Can we go back to what we were talking about, which is about what matters most to you? Yeah. Because some of your lyrics seem to me to be quite socially... Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a social... Co well, it's, it's more a case of our message and ethos is... It, you were saying about the song High Cost of Living, that's a song where, I mean, it's not... We. <sighs> It's our whole thing and our message is not, it's not very much a partisan sort of left wing or socialist or anarchist thing like a lot of the punk bands are and do, which I respect. But we're a lot more, a little bit more grounded in terms of it, it's not so much um, overthrow the government and, you know, revolt as if these are the circumstances in which we live. We can be a little bit more thoughtful and ethical about what we consume and what we do just in terms of i mean high cost of living that's just about it's not about it's it's talking about the the, the dichotomy between and the comparison between the amount of money a football costs to make a cost to buy over here and who's made it so it's like a nine-year-old in pakistan which for certain sports um, companies were found out you know the conditions of someone making that football were you know really terrible for kids and it's not it's not saying i'll oh, say so you don't buy that it's saying well appreciate what we've got and i think yeah. that's kind of and it's about enjoying it and um uh, think about how lucky you are I suppose it's in many ways the song "Another Way for, for Another Day for You and Me in Paradise" by Phil Collins is our, is our blueprint. But I, it's funny because that song does have good the lyrics. Music, the music background is very. It's like there's. I hate to say message. It's not a message, but you know, it's a. The, the lyrics mean something, but the back. You know, it's a. It's a party, have a good vibe backdrop to it, rather than sort of standing on our soapbox. It's like, you know, you can pump your fist in the air and sing along and have a good time to our music, but the music actually says something. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've got nothing, we've got, neither of us got anything against bands that are overtly political and have a lot of a, a political message, but we're not, we're not po massive, massively political people, but we are very socially conscious people. So if, uh, the, the idea that I had and we had, it took, uh, couple of years after the band started was just let, let's not try and be a band that goes on stage you know talks about uh, you know at length about going to a protest and then singing the song about it, it we, our, our, our whole thing was we'll we'll make the gig into a complete party and then if people are shouting the slogans or whatever that, that it's going to go in there and then they take the lyrics home and read them and then maybe it absorbs in that way and i think it's more of a velvet glove approach and and, and i think that that i think that there's a there's a lot of times with i mean everybody's different you can't please everybody but i know that there are people that are turned off by bands that go on stage and be very 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 political like you know f the bmp um 
you know, or you know, F George Bush or whatever. You get people that are just turned off by that. So our, our sort of ethos was, well, we're not very good at that anyway. We, even if you, you know, we wouldn't even pull in the people that, that do like that kind of thing. So we, we just said, well, we'll keep that out of the stage show. Let's have a party. And then if the, the message can trickle in um, through the lyrics or not, because I know that there's a million kids on earth that used to listen to Rage Against the Machine and all they were rocking to was the, 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 the righteous indignation and the ire in the music and not necessarily what he was saying. But then sometimes, you know, I, I used to read the lyrics and I, even though I knew what he was talking about, it never, it wasn't until I got punk, into punk music later that I actually got a message from music. So. It, it, people can take or leave the message, I think. Uh, uh, it's not, it, in a way, it's nothing to be proud of, but then it, it, it works well, for us. Well, at least you're being honest. Yeah. At least yeah. not lying. Yeah.